Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Recipe with Dr. Stephanie Finney. It is my hope that through each segment, you will receive ingredients to live your best life. One seasoning I am personally passionate about is in the area of health and wellness. In fact, I host an Instagram Live on Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time titled, Do You Know What's in Your Feminine Care? But I will speak more about this at the end of the show. Today, I have a special guest. And without further ado, I bring to you best-selling author and publisher, Miss Anna Black. Anna Black, welcome to The Recipe. Hello, and well, thank you. <laughs> Happy to be here. Awesome, awesome, welcome. Um, this is a pleasure for me. You are the first author I have brought onto the platform. So I know this is just one of many, but this is a great first start. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I like being the first. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Okay, so um, before I get into questions, tell us your story. How, tell us, you know, how you became an author. Tell us the beginning. Tell us everything. Oh, my God, the beginning. I did not uh, start writing when I was a four-year-old or nothing like that. I didn't have, like, okay. ever since I was able to hold a pen, that's not my story. Um, when I was in high school, I did want to go into journalism. Cause I feel like I wanted to write something that's just to know what, but all that didn't happen. I ended up getting married, going to hair school, worked in salon for a couple years, maybe three or four years. And then when I moved to Texas, I was like, um, want to do something different. And at that time I was going through a divorce and a separation from my ex-husband. And I was like, I was, Said I was depressed, I was sad, and I was like, so I started out just journaling, just, you know, just writing journals. So then I started wanting to write something with a happy ending, because I was just like, I want to do something just to, to make me feel better. So I wrote my first book. Um, that book still has not been published yet. <laughs> that was my very first book. That book needs a lot of work, but... And I was like, back at, back in the day, you know, it's old school, this back in the early 2000s where you emailing it, your friends at work stealing copy paper because they printed it all out, you know? So my girlfriends would read it and they would give me all this positive feedback, so much awesome positive feedback. And I was like, girl, I'm reading this book and I'm like forgetting that you wrote it. So I got another idea. So I wrote something else. Got another idea and wrote something else. So by the time I was even actively pursuing publishing, I had already written five books. So it um, kind of just became my thing. I didn't, I don't think, I didn't publish my first book until like in my thirties. So it, um, it just kind of happened. <laughs> I somehow, I fell into my talent or my talent just found me. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, I really appreciate you saying that. Well, first, thank you for telling, you know, about your divorce and, you know, going through that, because I think people need to hear what brought people to a place. I know I journal as a Christian because I want a constant reminder of this is the evolution of where Dr. Finney came from, you know, and, you know, I didn't become, you know, holy overnight. OK, you know, right. and we need to see that pattern. We need to be able to go back and look and reflect. Doesn't mean we stay there, but we can see it and reflect and see all of the improvement and say, oh, my God, thank you for where you brought me from. Thank you for that time. And I can, you know, I can use that as a stepping stone to propel me to the next level. And I know you write fiction, but still, I think journaling is just the key of anything to see an evolution of someone and where they've gone and where they are today. So thank you for that. Absolutely. And I, as you were saying about, um, although I write fiction, I try to leave some type of message in my, my, all of my novels, whether, cause I, I like, I love romance. I'm a romantic at heart. So that's my passion to write, but I do do a couple different other genres, but my first love is the romance. So I write about relationships, a lot of relationships and a lot of love and deceit, lies, cheating, and things like that. So I try to make my characters 
as realistic as possible. Something like a wife can read and say, I can relate, or somebody can read like, not if, if it, even if it's not your own personal story, you know somebody or you, you're familiar with somebody that had the same situation. And I try to give a message that, you know, when you're doing wrong, <laughs> you might get caught. <laughs> Sometimes you're going to get caught. And, um, and I, although I have stories of uh, adulterous people, I don't glorify it. Uh, you know, the way I believe it's still wrong. Uh, so I just try to make my books realistic and relatable to uh, common everyday people and give them a little fantasy too. Cause sometimes you want to escape, you know, the, 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 the weight of the world and the stress of the days. So you can get one of my books too and lay back and relax with a glass of wine and say, you know what? Now I feel better. Hey, I'll take that. I will take that. And I think that, you know, always, um, I talk to a lot of different people, you know, about different things. And, you know, religion is a key thing that, you know, some people talk about. And I'm like, you know, well, first, I'll say this, there's a difference between religion and spirituality. That's the first thing. And second of all, let's not act as if, you know, we're perfect as Christians. Let's, let's, right. let's, let's just stop that. Okay. Um, right. I have a glass of wine. I had someone um, that I know, I do an Instagram live on my, most, most of Mondays. It's a, it's a cooking class. And sometimes I'll have a glass of wine on that cooking class. And I had somebody, some, somebody D, DM me and say, you know, you should be careful doing stuff like that, you know, so people can see that as a Christian. I said, I want people to see that. I want people to see that, yes, I had a glass of wine. There's nothing wrong with that. Otherwise, I would not have had a glass of wine. I don't see what right. the big issue is. Do you think that, you know, Christians don't have a drink? I mean, in the Bible, you know, they drank wine from time to time. It's not a big more, deal. More than wine. Thank Please. you. you <laughs> how about this? How about you just don't get drunk? You will not see me doing that. You will not see me go to that extreme. So I was really surprised. And I said, you know, we, we have to, um, you know, use our spirit of discernment. You know, when, when it comes down to it, you decide what you want to watch, listen to, and it's based on your spirit of deception. So anywho, moving on from that. Uh, you know, that's like, that leads like to another conversation because- yeah. My first book, Now You Want to Come Back, like okay. in my bio, of course, I give God praises in all things all the time. Yeah. And, you know, I let it be known that I am a Christian. I do follow Christ. And I had one lady send me this long email. Back in the day, we really had DMs like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I think back then I had a MySpace or something. But that was she before sent, a cell phone. <laughs> right, 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 right. We had the little pages and stuff. Yeah. So she sends me this long email about... Um, when she read my book, she expected better from a Christian woman um, if I'm going to represent Christ in just a whole bunch of things where I replied to her and, and, and said, I do this solely for entertainment. It's a fictional book. It's not it, it, it's um, it's it's not my life. These are made up characters that do things that you might not agree with. And, and then she got on to me about uh, the profanity, da, 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 da. everyday people curse. And if you go to, if you, um, I have to put it, set it out this way. Do you go to the movies? Of course, the answer is yes. Do you watch rated R movies? Yes. What comes to nose? The same, cussing, murdering, killing, whatever, whatever, whatever. So it's like you're attacking me, um, my spirituality rather. You're attacking that based off fiction characters and make-believe stories. I'm like, that's how I was just telling um, Tamisha that I have, after all these years, I have to, I have the ability to recognize when it's a personal attack versus professional criticism. Because sometimes people, they come directly for you. And like, you just to skip all, all the way over what I do, but you come to attack me. And some people just shouldn't do that. It's like they took their mind off of what you were doing that night in your um, live and focused solely on the glass of wine. Like, like that's all you took from it. <laughs> you know, you didn't get nothing else out of it. You didn't so, see the food I made? I had some phenomenal food that I fixed. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and I always say, you know, it's, it's just you you make the decision. It's no different than if you're watching television and something comes on that you don't want to see. You turn the channel. It's right. very simple. It's very simple. So absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So speaking of, um, you know, characters, um, how do you select the names of your characters? Is, are these people that you know, or you just make them up? Or I'm, I'm just curious. That's just, you know. You know, some, sometimes, not sometimes, most times when I just don't have a name to pop in my head that I want my character to be, because I have to watch it. I don't want to have a character that has the same name from another book. Although I think I've made that mistake before, but what I do is I go, um, got that lipstick on my teeth. I go online to like the um, sites where you got baby boy names, baby girl names, and I just look through all the names so I find something that, like, what this? Yeah. So that's how I pick names. Most of the time, I just go on them websites and look at girl names and boy names and things like that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Interesting. I was curious about that. Okay. Um, so what type of research do you do and how long do you spend researching before starting a book? It depends on the character. Um, a lot of times, you know, Google is our friend. I, I, I always make sure I, if I'm going to pick a career, I'm, I go make sure how long they have to go to college for to get this degree. What what colleges are popular for this type of degree? I look at like the income and salary bracket that they'll fall in. So when I choose a character's um, career or job, if it's in a professional world, I go out and Google the details of the job. Or like if I'm going to have a scene with them at work, what would the conversation actually be about? So that's what I do a lot of research just by going online and Google and stuff. And then when I do the medical stuff. Fortunately for me, my best friend is a nurse practitioner. So I always was like, hey, so, 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 so. so she helps me out with all the medical type things. And if she don't know, she just asks a colleague. Uh, but for, for the most part, and oh, I had I go, I'm a, I think I'm fashionable, but I'm not a um, I'm not a design type person. Like I don't have to have Louis and, and all these Chanel and stuff. That's just not me. I'm not, um, I like pretty clothes, nice clothes and things, but I'm not a, like a label chasing person. And a lot of books, depending on the status, I have to reach out to my girlfriends. Like, if you were going here and blah, 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 what type of suit would you wear? I need a name brand. So my girlfriends help me out a lot on that because their professions are different and they, they label shit so. I get a lot of um, help from my girlfriends too. That is awesome, Anna. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Um, do you hide any secrets in any of your books that only a few people will find? <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to say the word hide, but I revealed some secrets in some books that only certain people, when they're, when they're reading it, they're like, oh, yeah. I know what she's talking about. Oh, 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 you put that on a character. <laughs> like, you allowed your character to do that. And um, I like I have this one book called um, Who Do I Run To? And the the whole scene of her condo, even from the street and everything, is the place that my girlfriend used to live in. So it's the same street, same layout, same staircase. So that whole the apartment scene is one of my girlfriends. Well, it's a rental property for her now, but back in the day, she used to live in this condo. And in some of the scenarios that she was going through with well, her relationship, there, it was some, some real drama back then. So it gave me some, it gave me some good, um, good story for my book. So when she read that, she's like, you wrong. You so wrong. You so wrong. Yeah, I had to use it. I had to use it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. So, um, I don't know if this is politically correct, but I'm going to ask it and you can say, Oh, that's wrong. Or tell me, you know, either way, but do you have, um, or if you did, do you have like writing 
kryptonite, that's what I'm calling it, or or have or have you ever gotten writer's block? I guess that's no, I don't want to say writers, I'll say readers block because of all of the books that you've done that you end up, you know, reading so much trying to get to a certain point of going to the next book. So yeah, readers block or is there a, a kryptonite in your uh genre that you have to deal I, with from time I, to time? I wouldn't I would go with writer's block and because that makes it a little more that's a common word that people use for when you stuck. Okay. Uh, okay. Most times when I'm writing or in the process of writing a book, I don't read at all. Okay. I don't read at all. I don't entertain myself with anybody else's works because I don't even want any part of my story to have a subtopic or sub anything from what I heard or that goes inside of, of, of my thoughts. So I try not to read at all. When I come across a moment when I'm stuck on a book, how I deal with that, I deal with that by setting myself a word count a day. And then I um, I go back and reread and reread and reread into the voices, not the, the other voices, the characters start to speak to me again. Because a lot of people, everybody has a different writing style. And I heard for writers as a type A and a type B. I'm a type B. Type A writers, they write out the outline. They write all these character profiles. They write out all these things before they start writing. I'm a B. I don't do any outlines anymore. I don't do any of those things anymore because it's distracting. Because every time I try to stick with one thing, my characters lead me to wherever they want me to go. So I, I, I my process is to, if I have an idea, I have a title. Most times the idea comes first and then the title. I just let the characters tell me what they want. The only thing that I have control over is maybe the age, profession, location. Um, and sometimes I, I have a character that I want to start out with as maybe timid and shy and the character is like, no, no ma'am, that's not me. This is what we're gonna do. So I kind of let my characters take the will, so to speak, and just let my mind just be free and, and, and just go with what the voices are telling me. And I know that sounds a little cuckoo or crazy, but anybody who's who has a creative anything know that this stuff is like they're talking to you, <laughs> like they're feeding your brain on what to say and what to write. So, but I don't, whenever I get stuck on something or that writer's black moment, I definitely, I have to start creating a word count. And if I don't hit that word count for the day, that day, I got to increase my word count for the next day because it has to, uh, it has to get done. Like right now, I'm ashamed to say that. And if Cole, Cole is watching, he cussing me out because I'm so, so overdue for one of my books. And I'm really, really trying to finish it. But life happens. And everything is like a, a whirlwind for me right now because I recently started a new um, uh, with a new company uh, end of 2020, and right they put me to work right away. As you know, we were together in Virginia, so it's like it's been a lot of things on my plate. But I'm trying, Cole. Every every free moment I get, I'm on the keyboard, so I'm gonna get it to you. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back. All right. Hey, it's your girl, Lisa Denae, and I want to tell you about a product that has changed my life, Rain Premium Sanitary Napkins. Rain products are infused with a Nobel Prize winning material called graphene. It's the graphene strip that provides the various health benefits that can improve your quality of life during that time of the month. Listen, I've been very loyal to a certain brand of feminine products, but I've never experienced the results I get with Rain products. The difference is in the graphene strip. Using Rain products has totally eliminated the painful cramps I experience, and it can also 
help balance your body's pH, eliminate harmful bacteria, and help fight fatigue. Graphene moves heat away from your core to keep you cool and comfortable. Ladies, it's time to upgrade your feminine care with products that not only offer protection, but also improve your health and wellness. Place your order today and receive your premium sanitary napkins delivered directly to your door. Visit www.drfcare.com to make your purchase today. And don't forget to mention that your girl Lisa Denae and Stunner Radio sent you. It's the clock, so I'll be there. Welcome back, everyone. I have um, author and a uh, best-selling author and publisher Anna Black with us today. And uh, we've been delving into the writing process and we're going to keep going and then we're going to get into the publishing piece. But as far as the writing is concerned, I wanted to ask you, um, do you ever consider writing under a pseudonym? Um, I had way back in the day, I did. Um, I was, it was suggested um, by my agent because she was really coaching me that if I'm gonna write um, a different genre than romance, that I should write a different genre and another name. But I thought about it and I processed it and processed it. And I thought, no, I don't wanna do that because I feel like I want, if it comes from Anna Black, I want everybody to know that I wrote this. And if you, if, if I do a pen name and go and to a book event, people gonna know it's me anyway. So I, um, anything that I put out, I just wanted to have an Anna Black stamp on it. And it's like, and it gives to me, it lets people know that I'm not in the box. You know, I am capable of doing something other than romance, other than erotica, other than contemporary fiction, and like. My next goal is to do suspense. So anything that I pen, I want people to know that I penned it. I don't want to. And to me, I think it's a whole bunch of work to keep up social media with Anna Black stuff. <laughs> Just imagine if I had to keep up stuff with with uh, Beyonce stuff, you know? <laughs> so no, I just stick with being who I am, and um, and just anything I write is Anna Black. Okay. Okay, awesome. All right. So um, next question. Do you try to be more original or do you prefer to simply, and I want to say simply because that's not right, because then I'm basically steering you in the right in the direction, but do you try to be more original or to deliver what readers want based on pop, based on popularity? I do both. I do okay. both because when you're writing a when you're writing a certain genre, that genre has to fall in line with that. Like if you like R&B, R&B is going to sound like R&B. You know, you like house, house is going to sound like house, like reggae is going to sound like reggae. So I can't write a romance novel and be out of the norm because now it's not romance anymore. Um, do I have a different um, level of romance? I write yes, because I can write some real sappy, oh, her hair was born in the wind type of romance. But I also can write contemporary romance where it's not a lot of, um, a lot of lovey-dovey romances, romantic, romanticism, if I'm saying it right, in the story. So um, I, um, I don't, I do give the people what they want far as genre wise, but for my story, I don't play it safe sometimes. I don't. And I took a risk on writing this book called um, Split Image. Split Image was published maybe back in 2011. I'm not sure. But I was in a publishing house that I had um, some major issues with and later on got all the rights back to my book. I had seven books with this company and it wasn't working out. It, it was, a, I don't want to even open that, up that can, but when I got all of my books back, uh, Urban books about five. They bought, now you want to come back one, two, and three, and they bought Who Do I Run To and Who Do I Run To Now, which is a two part se series. I got my book, Split Image, back, but in the time I wrote it, it made sense. It made a whole bunch of sense for the time period I wrote it. 
because social media wasn't booming like it is. Um, it wasn't a lot of Instagram, Facebook, and all these things at the era that I wrote the book. So coming to um, the 20, 2020, 2019, the latter years when all of this stuff is around, the book is unrealistic. So as time started going on and things started to change, I started getting reviews like this book don't make no sense because social media would have, and I had to, I, I haven't put that book back up yet. The story is great, but I want to find a way to revamp it where it makes sense with the times. Because if I have time real quick, I'll just tell you, do I have time? You have time. Okay. This is your platform. Uh, yes, please. Really quick, it's, it's about a set of twins, sisters, that grew up in a small town in Georgia, who had a, a righteous over much father, was a pastor. And um, when they became of age, one wanted to sing. She wanted to sing circular music. Daddy wasn't having it. Daddy like, you know what? We ain't bringing that type of drama to this holy them down house, so you going about your business. So she wasn't well known or popular, but she went to New York, got a career, but she never told nobody where she came from. She, uh, her mother had passed away. She told everybody her aunt raised her. She never said she had a twin. Never, had, never said she had a twin. So um, when the, the twins, they were coming up on a 26th or 27th birthday or something like that, and they wanted to reunite. They hadn't seen each other in all these years. And now it's just like, I'm grown. Daddy can't tell me what to do. I'm going to come and see you. The day of her arrival, her sister was murdered. And then the person that murdered her found these twin there and looked like, what the hell? Like, where did you come from? Because no one knew she, knew she had a twin. So to cover his self, he t kidnaps the sister, make the sister go through all these changes to pretend to be her dead sister. And back then it made plenty of sense. <laughs> and if you read it, going through the book, it made plenty of sense. But the way social media is so hot now, you really can't hide stuff. So now it's like, Come on now, they don't, they ain't believable. But I wrote this book way back in the early 90s sometime, when, well, mid 90s sometime, when this was believable. So, yeah, I just, and I have I can to find a way to revamp it. Yes, yes, and in my mind, I'm picturing this. I'm picturing this happening because I, I grew up in the 90s. I, I get it, I get it, you know? Right. Yes, absolutely, wow. Sounds like an awesome book, Miss Anna Black. Yeah, that's one of my girlfriend, Tony. That's she always say, girl, I don't care. I don't care what nobody says. Split image, that's my book. That's my book. <laughs> I love the title. Yeah, so once I can get it um revamped and do some rewrites on it and figure out a way to spin the story to modernize it, it'll definitely be back up. Wow, awesome, awesome. Okay. So Back to the books, and I know that you have like some part ones and twos and threes, et cetera, but do you want each book to stand on its own or or are you trying to build a body of wealth or body of work with connections between each book? Um, it's more so given uh, the readers what they want. I used to be, when I wrote my first five books, I had no intentions of any of those those books becoming sequels or um, series, none whatsoever. Now you wanna come back was my first book to be released. And during that time when I released it, that's when um, Amazon started doing that 99 cent thing because book books were never that low. It's like I struck gold because that book came out the perfect time while well, these books were 99 cent. So that's how I actually gained my fan base through that one book. And people was loving this book so much. When I say Now You Want to Come Back was my best selling series, I sold maybe over 700,000 copies of that books from that series. That book was number one at that time for over 20 consecutive weeks at that time. And everybody kept, I was getting all these emails and I felt like, when I said I felt a little famous back then, <laughs> because I, it's like every day I'm checking my inbox. I got 10, 12 emails from readers like, 
I want a part two. What's part two? What's part two? We want to know more about these characters. And I was like, there's no part two. No, I don't know what you, what do you mean part two? I gave you a good book. There's no more. But they like, they want to hear more about Rayshawn, Layla, they just love this couple. And I was like, what to do, what to do? I don't know how to write a sequel. Like, I don't even know what I would talk about in a part two. Cause back then, <laughs> Dr. Finney, if you look at some of my older books, I just got through going through the edits for Who Do I Run To? This is re-releasing. That book had 90 some thousand words. I ain't hit that number in a long time. <laughs> My books now be 45-ish, you know, 50-ish, and they'd be a struggle to do that. But back then, my books were like 70K and plus for one book. So I was like, how do these people want a sequel? But I sat down, and me, I'm a friend's sister. I was like, Lord, if this is my calling, if this is what you really want me to do, you'll give me something. You'll give me something. And like they said, God will provide. Once, that, once I got an idea, I sat down and wrote that book. Couldn't stop writing that book. And they liked the second one even better than the first one. <laughs> wow. I'm thinking, thinking I'm off the hook. Now they want a part three. Wait a minute, people. <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. And again, Lord, Father, God in heaven, listen, <laughs> this is what I want to do, Father. Give me another story. But what helped me with my sequels get back then is that I crossed over my characters. Like, I, now you want to come back, who do I run to, and my best friend and my man. Those three different, totally different stories. All the characters cross over in each book. So you get to keep up with them all the time, even though they're from separate stories. Because all those books were standalones in the very beginning. But when I started writing the series, they all started coming together. So. But I like standalones more because you can say that's the end. But series, people love series. They 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 series junkies. So hey. Well, that says something about the popularity. You yeah. know. So that's 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 awesome to have a fan base that wants to see these characters move into different areas and wants to and want to see them evolve over time. That that's wow. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's 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 a testament to you as an author. <laughs> yeah. Now you want to come back. That's my baby. Um, that book has bought me so much success. So many readers. So many readers back then. Where I just you know you first put when you first put your first book out, and I know any author can uh, admit to this. You have no idea what to expect. You go in unknown, like. I hope everybody liked my book. I hope everybody liked my book. But then when you start getting this positive feedback, it's just like, oh, wow. This, this, these are not my family members saying this, this stuff. It's not my friends. So I really got something here. So, yeah. Well, tell, tell us how many books you've actually written. I mean, because that, that's something I should have asked up front. Oh, my God. I have written... 35, and I want, I, I want to clarify, I have 35, say, titles, because my, my 35 books consist of full-length novels, short stories, collaborations, anthologies, because I've written with some awesome people. Um, I All of my works together would come up to about 35 or 36 now. And that's in the sequels, standalones, and all that good stuff. Wow. That's yeah. a lot of books. That is a lot of books. A lot of characters. It's like, <laughs> well, some, some people will email me or send me something asking about a character, and I hadn't even, I'm like, what book did she, what? <laughs> oh, I'm like, oh, oh. Sometimes I can read an email like, oh, are they talking about my book? And then click in my head, like, oh, that was uh, the illest nana. Or, oh, that was, the, it, it sometimes is like, I guess, like a, a old school artist is going on tour. They still got to rehearse their songs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. You mentioned other authors, so if you don't mind, tell us what what other authors you are friends with, and how do they help you become a better writer? 
Oh my good. My I I have written novels with um well when I say collaborations, my collaboration person back in the day was Tamika Newhouse. She was the first person I ever did a collaboration with. That's when I was on the Delphine. And it was so awesome um, to do a collaboration because it's not like you're competing against the other writer, but they inspire you to, now my chapter got to be better. My, now my chapter got to be better. Or, and, it, and, it, and it pushes your creativity because you have to write your characters and your storyline around their characters and their storyline. And they got to come together. Like you can't, like her chapter can't have us on the couch drinking wine and having the conversation. I come back later and my the same scene there at a restaurant. You know, it takes a lot because you got to mix up lineup. It has to be chronological. It has to make sense. And whenever you have settings together, where you because sometimes we tell the settings again because we tell it from the other person's point of view. So you have to make sure the characters are on point. So it's doing collaborations is so liberating. My favorite person to write with, hands down, is uh, Tina Marie. Me and Tina Marie have done more than more than one project together. And although Tina is a slow writer, yeah, Tina, I know you hear me. The, the chick is bad on that pen though. She 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 challenges me and she helps me too because she's more of a hood writer, and I'm not. So I'd be like, I do the, I feel in more of the romantic stuff and she does more of the, the streets out of like, we got the hoods or boyfriends or whatever. She knows how to get that good and the keys and the trap house and stuff. She handles that part. I just handle the 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 romantic and the family side. So I, I love writing with Tina. I have written with Princess Diamond before, which was awesome. Me and her and Tina got a, um, a dual collaborative book that we did together um, called, uh, I think it's a hit us, ooh. See, that happens too, you forget your, all your titles. It's a hit us wife, I think. But if y'all go to my page or anything, y'all see all of my titles anyway. But um, those are the people that I really have collaborated with. But I have been in anthologies with Entice, um, Shakur, um, Oh, I've been in uh, Carl Weber's Full Figured um, anthology with uh, Arthur Sky. I'm in Full Figured Number Ten. That's my. Um, that's the one that I'm in. So it's it's just awesome. I work. I can't. It's like I'm forgetting people' names, and I'm sorry, but I have worked with a few, few good writers. Yeah. That's okay. Well, we'll just blame your mind and not your heart. It's okay. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the perfect time to take another break. So you guys tune in after the break and we'll be back back with um, Miss Anna Black. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, comedian, actress, Coca Brown. And I got to give a huge shout out to my girl, Dr. Stephanie Fenney, because she put me on. What? To the Jewel Sanitary Napkin. These babies are amazing. Not only are they good to me, they're good for me. Not only do they help with absorption, moisture control, and protection, because yes, sometimes I like to wear white, but these babies also have a great ingredient called graphene that helps with cramps. Huh? Are you kidding me? So you're telling me that I'm protected and I can control my moods a little bit? I love it. So please make sure you hit up my girl, Dr. Stephanie Finney. They have a variety of sizes for every kind of flow, whether it's heavy, light, overnight, she got you. So make sure you hit up my girl, Dr. Stephanie Finney, and get you some Jewel Sanitary Napkins today. I strongly endorse these, honey, especially if you like me. You need all the help you can get for that time of the month. All right? <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I have Miss Anna Black, best-selling author and publisher with us today. And we are having a great conversation. So you know I have more questions. Yes. Um, and this is a question that um, you know I'm definitely interested in hearing about because, I, I mean, I, I'm curious, but how did publishing your first book change your process of writing? Mm, my process. Uh, my first book didn't change my process of writing. Um, I think my process of writing changed when I actually went on my own. 
to Black House because, as I said before, my first seven books are published with Delphine Publications. And um, it's not like I was under her thumb as far as my, my titles or books because she didn't tell me what to write and she let me choose my title. So I, um, I didn't feel like my writing wasn't good or well, but when I went on my own and I started to hire different um, people to do like my editing and my covers and um, my typesets and things like that. When I had control over it, they started showing me a whole new world of things that I wasn't getting before. And I'm not, and don't get me wrong, everyone's listening, I'm not here to like bash anyone. But when I started working with other editors and other um, designers, they started to teach me more quality. Uh, like I, I found out like all of my prior books that was written before needed definitely to be rewritten and re-edited because they were, it was just a lot of things that I didn't know. Like I never went, and got any professional writing training. I never got any um, professional writing courses or anything like that. Everything I wrote just just straight for me just having a creative mind. So I didn't know about point of views. Um, you know, the editors that we had before wasn't pointing out the mistakes I was making with um, maybe having like a boatload of commas. That shouldn't be in there, you know? So it's like, the editors before were just pretty much basically doing a simple, making sure you don't miss my words because there was a lot of grammar issues. I was doing, when I say POVs, it's like point of views. Like I had what they call in the industry, industry head hopping. Like it can be two characters in the same scene. When it's two characters or three, more than one character in the same scene, normally it's coming from one person's perspective. And if it flops to another person's perspective, you have to divide or stop the story because it's changing someone to someone else's point of view. So it, when I look back on my older books now and I read them, I can see where it could have been confusing because I can only tell you how you feel as far as your body language or your tone. I'm not in your head. So let me give you an example. I can't say, I knew she was angry. I just knew she was angry. That says nothing. How do you know she was angry? I'm not in your head. I have to say the scowl on her face or the way her brows furrowed. So you have to give a description because you're not in that person's head to actually know what they're thinking. So I learned that. And when I started learning these things, I felt like, oh my God, you know, it's like I butchered my first seven books, but I didn't because I ended up getting them back. And I got to do rewrites. So it still worked out, but um, I just learned a lot and my style of writing changed after I went on my own because I learned way more do's and don'ts. And I learned, and I was able to sit down with a couple of great editors who, especially with Urban, I like it because when the editor reviews your stuff, they send you back your, your works with a letter. And they tell you your strong points, what they think that, they they just give you so much feedback to like now you feel more comfortable in writing because lesson learned I got that in my in my rolodex lesson learned so my style of writing got better way better after I went on on my own my first book under myself was a short story called uh, if it wasn't for Tony and I remember when that book came out the sales done so well and I did not get one single review about grammar and editing. That one. And I used to get those all the time back then. <laughs> awesome. So, you know, you said you mentioned going into your own publishing house. What does that mean for someone like me that doesn't know, you know, about that? What what, what does that mean? <laughs> it just means that I went out and got my own business name, got me an LLC. Um, and I uh, just started loading my books up to the channels on my own. 
I, I got my own covers, my own editors, my own typesetter, and everything I pay for out of my own pocket. So I have the option for control. I can put up what I want to put up. If I want to go right now and update a, a cover, I can. I don't have to clear with nobody, ask no questions if I want to, if I feel like, hmm, this book could be juicier. Let me take this down and do some rewrites and put it back up. It just gives you total control of your work and what you want to do with it. Because okay, I read the reviews. If I start <laughs> bad reviews on something, I'm like, oh, where did I go wrong? Now, if I had the power to go fix some stuff, I will. Mm-hmm. Okay, Prince. Thank you. Thank you, Prince. For... <laughs> yeah, you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I thought I, I thought I heard I heard an echo. I said no. I said, uh, okay, Prince, because you own your own everything. Oh yeah, <laughs> I have that tattoo actually. <laughs> I, have, I do, I do, I do, I do. I don't want to show. It. There we go. Okay. Girl, that's it right there. That's right there. <laughs> You're doing the most. <laughs> I got that tattoo, tattoo when I was 22 years old. <laughs> You off the chain. I love you. <laughs> I was a fan, a huge fan. <laughs> well, I, I am. I am a huge fan to this day. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned book reviews. Do you read them? And how do you deal with bad or good book reviews? Absolutely read them. I love reading my reviews. I <laughs> mean, I sometimes when I get ready to read my reviews, if I hadn't read them, say, I, if I don't read them in like 30 days. When I started reading my reviews, I had my glass of wine, my popcorn. I'm ready. So it's it's, it's very, um, it warms my insides when you have people to just tell you how your story touched them or they, your story made, gave them confidence uh, or your story made. I had one review and man, this girl emailed me. She didn't post a review. So I want to review, I take that back. She emailed me and she said that for the longest time, she always felt um, insecure about her weight. She was like, I didn't go out. I didn't even try to dress cute. But a lot of my stories are based on plus size women. And she said, when she started reading my books, it's just like every book she would read with these confident BBWs, it just starts to make her feel like I can be cute too. And I can, she's like, and that really just changed my whole attitude about myself. And I was like, we knew the, the email, like, oh my God, thank you so much. I love you so much. <laughs> never met the woman, probably will never meet her, but something that I put out in the world helped her change her image of herself. So it's a great feeling. So I love reading my reviews. And when I get those bad ones, I I used to, way back in the day, and my girlfriends would tell you, I would cuss, bust, da, 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 this person I know what they're talking about. I'd have a fit, but I start to, as I start to grow as an author, I start to um, identify the difference between a personal attack versus um, real positive feedback. So now I take the good with the bad. I can't please everybody. As long as the majority is good, I'm good. So I have a couple of people here and there that don't like it. That's okay. Because I don't like everything I watch, or everything I see, everything I buy either. So I don't expect for everybody to like every single Anna Black book. But And I'm saying this because this is so funny, though. Whoever you are, if you ever, ever, ever see me in an interview anywhere, if you meet me in person, this is one person. That read five, five, y'all, five, five of my books and gave me a bad review for everyone. If, if I ever have a chance, and you know who you are, if I ever meet you, introduce yourself to me and let me know who you are. Because I want to know, why do you just stop at book two? <laughs> How did you read five of my novels and still not like none of them and keep reading? <laughs> I think mean, it's gotta be some 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 fiction in um, in your your statement because I don't get it. <laughs> That's such a good point. <laughs> Did somebody hire you to do that? I don't know. I'm, I just want to know. I want to figure that one out. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. Um, if if you could tell your your younger writing self anything, what would it be? <laughs> <laughs> that is an awesome question, and I will say, don't sign nothing that you don't understand. Don't sign nothing that you don't don't understand, because I went in the first time around not knowing nothing about the in industry, not knowing nothing about contracts and term of agreement and so many things. I would I just was excited to publish my book. I was just excited to get out there and that was a a learning I'm not gonna call it a mistake because it's over and done, but that was a, a real big learning experience for myself. So I would tell my younger self, look baby, don't you sign nothing that you don't know nothing about. And if you don't know nothing about it, get some help. Let somebody else read it. You can afford a lawyer, find somebody else that maybe have a little bit more experience in it to help you out before you sign away any rights to anything that you create. Whether it be music, books, art, or whatever. Read the front, fine print. Okay, okay. And I have a question about marketing books. Um, what is the best way to market? Is it to get with a publishing company? I'm, you know, again, I'm I'm not an author, so just just curious. Well, I can tell you what, what if you get with a boutique or a, a independent or Indigo publishing house, like say, I have Black House now. I have a Black House website. So if you out here listening now, if you want to write romance and you're interested in publishing, definitely go check out bhousepublishing.com and um, look at my submission in, uh, information because I want to start publishing authors, but I want my lines to be about love and romance. So that's the only type of genre I'm taking for Black House. Um, when you're with a smaller company, like I'm under Cohart and Cohart promotes the hell out of his authors. Giveaways, Whatever, it's like a boom. We're, we're one family, we're one house. We share everybody's stuff all the time. So we promote, we cross promote. With Urban, no, they don't do none of that. You you get your books, they give you um, author copies and they give you quite a bit. They give you like around about 60 author copies. So you you can use for promotion and things like that. But then they cross promote you only in the, like the back of a book but they're not doing any flyers for you. They're not, they're not ramping things up on the internet for you. They're not doing any of that. And for myself, I'm a walking brand everywhere I go, no matter what, I try to have some type of Anna Black card, um, flyer, anything, but I'm definitely gonna give you my website. You got your phone, scan this barcode, go to my website. So I'm just a, a walking promotion. I, Anybody that meet me gonna meet me as an author. I don't introduce myself as Anna the GM. I'm Anna the writer. So I'm just a walking marketing person for myself. Awesome. And I have I have one last question for you. And that is what does literary success look like for you? Literary success looks like to me. It will be when I do not have to leave my house to go and earn income from somewhere else. Once I have just that state of, of wealth or even the, the substa uh, income substantial enough for me to maintain everything I need to take care of on a monthly basis, that's what it looks like to me, because right now, although I have all these brilliant books out here, in order for me to still maintain my lifestyle, do the things I do, I still have another job. And I want to, once that's done, I made it. <laughs> I made it. Well, I believe it's coming. I really do. You and I have talked about that. And I have said the world has yet to see your greatness. And I'm saying it again. I think this is probably the third or fourth time. So I absolutely believe that for you. Thank you. I believe it for myself. Thank you so much. 
Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to grace us with your presence, best-selling author and publisher, Anna Black. Before I go, if you are on Instagram, please connect to my IG Live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight as I top off the night with the final serving of health and wellness in the area of feminine care. And for any men out there that are listening or watching, please don't shy away from this topic because if you have important women in your life, you also need to know about this information. That's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this segment of Miss Anna Black, best-selling author and publisher. See you next time on The Recipe as I continue to bring you all of the ingredients for living your best life. And the packaging, it says Jewel on it. And she sent me so many different, I mean, this for moderate flow, heavy flow. Hold on. And this was my favorite. <laughs> that is my favorite. That is my favorite. <laughs> I can always appreciate an overnight. But what really, what I was really impressed by was the, the the length, how long it was. And how and it's not as thick. If, if you guys still get that, those lovely friends, sometimes that thing could just be out of control and never do what you asked it to do, <laughs> be all over the place. But honestly, like I had absolutely no problems at all. And I, I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate this product so good because a lot of people, you know, they, they want to send you stuff, and it's like, okay, you know, you want to believe in everybody, but everybody's product is not a good product, especially something when it comes to feminine hygiene and sanitary this and sanitary. You got to be very careful because sometimes, you know, uh, whatever, is, whatever the stuff is made with, it don't always agree with your body chemistry but i had absolutely no problems and i wouldn't even say this if i didn't mean it i gave my the, the girls in my podcast they use it my my other my podcast member she don't even use sanitary napkin she's like a tampon girl mm -hmm. but she really appreciated this and i thought you know I have to tell you this. I couldn't wait to get on here to tell you this. So for everybody that's on here that's still going through them, getting those monthly visitors, please support Dr. Finney's business. I can try it myself, and I and I love it. Wow. I Thank you. you so promote things that I actually try myself. If you have a chance to go in and support Dr. Finney, amazing product. And I'm going to leave it like that. <laughs> yeah,